Well, 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 where do we begin about the 2021 Verizon 200 at the Indianapolis Road Course? Where do we begin? And before we get to that, let's go off topic really quick about this weekend in motorsports. Number one, Will Power, the GOAT, finally wins this year. And that means uh, he's been on a consecutive winning streak for the past 15 years in a row. And that was one of the reasons why it upset me at the Detroit that he lost. Not only because he lost, but of course I want to see him win. And I want to see him keep having his seasonal streak. I know he's not going to go for another championship for the third year in a row. I just want to see him do do his best and win, 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 all that. Um, Number two... Mm, crap. I don't know what I was going to say. Oh, yeah. Uh, number two in pro motocross, Ken Roxon and Chase Sexton, my two favorite riders, uh, won at Unadilla. I think that's what it's called. Uh, number three for NHRA. What a, what a day to be an NHRA fan. Uh, John Forrest won uh, the funny car race at Topeka. And his daughter, uh, Brittany Forrest, won for Top Fuel. And that's just an amazing moment. And from what I read, from what I heard, I believe this is the first ever father, um, family member related winning the same race. I could I could be wrong. Like, I do watch NHRA. I do my best to have the best knowledge. But great day for NHRA. Great day if you're a Force fan. If you're a fan of the Force family. And finally, Alex Tagliani, my favorite NASCAR Pinty Series driver who did do IndyCar Fun Fact and Champ Car. He won. So, what a weekend. What a weekend. Alright, so, with that being said, let's begin. Alright, so, for the second year in a row, IndyCar and NASCAR had their crossover at the Indianapolis Road Course at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Of course, the IndyCar race... Um, the Indy Car Race was just another, um, Indianapolis Road Cross race. There was some action, there was some good racing. So there's that, I'm surprised, to be honest. Jimmy Johnson finished top 20, and the GOAT will power won the race. We already talked about that. And then, Xfinity. I feel like last year was better, to be honest, because we actually had good racing with no stupid chaos or whatnot. I'll get to that when I talk about the cup race as well, so I'll hold on to that thought. Um, Last year's Xfinity race was better, to be honest. This, um, the Xfinity race was good, but I just prefer last year better, uh, to be honest. And now on to the cup series. So, the reason why, in case you didn't know, I did not do reactions for the cup race at the Indianapolis Road Course because I had to work. So, because, like, the race was finally at 1. We actually had a good start time. I managed to see the first two parts of the race. I don't want to say stages because I don't want to. So, I'm just going to say two parts or two segments. Alright, so, let's talk about it, shall we? I swear, honestly, the first two parts of the race were honestly my favorite parts about the race because we saw good racing, good action, just good racing for whatever position. Although I hate the segment racing. I It's just stupid that we had to end it on yellow. We It's stupid that we have that to begin with. Um, so yeah, Tyler Reddy won those two segments. Okay. Like, since we had a segment racing since 2017, they act like it's a big deal because of the chase and because of the extra points that doesn't really matter and all that stuff. Like, they make it a big deal because of some, what, what, some cut line. But it's not a big deal. But aside from that, good racing for the first two segments. And yeah, there were some incidents, you know, like Austin Cedric spinning, uh, Debedetto, Christopher Bell went off. Uh, I think Brakazasi crashed, um, but kept it going. 
um, Ross Chastain, I think, I, I, I know Ross Chastain spun, but I don't know if he spun and then Joey Logano spun. I don't remember. And I'm assuming, and I, if I can remember correctly, there were other <coughs> spins and all that for the first two segments. So, I did not see the final part of the race because I had to leave the house to go to work. And here's the thing. I I was hoping the race would be good. The, like, the entire rest of the race, the remainder of the race, I was hoping that race would be good. Trust me. So, I went to work and all that stuff. Then whenever I had the time to use the bathroom, um, I checked my phone on the NASCAR app to see what's going on in the race. Uh, to see what was happening, like who did what. Um... And then, like, I remember seeing, like, Instagram posts, Instagram story about the race. Like, they were under yellow for three, yada, yada, yada. And then I remember, like, seeing NASCAR app. We were, like, under yellow with, like, nine laps to go, I think. Not eight or nine laps to go. It was, the race was, like, two hours and 17 minutes in so far. And I was like, oh, sweet. It's going to be another, it's going to be like Watkins Glen last week. Another short race because a lot of people are starting like these short races i'm like oh sweet they're gonna end it they're gonna end the race very soon Uh, very soon it's gonna be a short race very awesome good race so far (sighs) i just had to run my mouth didn't i all right so this is where we had our problems so, like, during the restart, whenever we're going to turn number six, um, a lot of drivers are in the curves, of course, but there was, like, debris scattering all over the place, especially on the racetrack. Then Martin Truex Jr. spun. At first, when I was checking out, like, whatever happened in the race, I know Truex spun. I didn't know anything about debris. I was like... And then I saw, like, people being mad about something with that incident. I was like, oh, Truex spun. Maybe that's why I didn't throw the yellow. Nope. I found out that it was like a lot of debris in turn six. It was all over the place. Literally all over the place. And guess what? NASCAR once again keeps it green. They never threw out the yellow. You think that if there was debris on track, literally also an active track, they would throw the caution, right? No, 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 they not. They, they not. Unfortunately... And then, one lap later, we had ourselves our first multi-car crash involving William Byron, Kyle Busch, Daniel Suarez. I, but I feel so bad for Daniel Suarez, dude, honestly. Daniel Suarez has the shittiest luck on road courses. Like, same with track house, honestly. It's on road course, although Suarez had a decent result. He threw up. Uh, Coda, uh... His gear, his uh, gearbox was stuck. Um, Sonoma, I think he took out McDowell and then lost some positions. Road America, transmission issues. Watkins Glen, again, more issues. And then the Indianapolis road course, he crashed. <sighs> poor Suarez, dude. Not only him, but poor Trackhouse. They all deserve so much better than this, honestly. I feel so bad for them. I really hope something good happens to them when they race at the road course next at the Charlotte Roval. And I agree that Daniel Suarez saying something like, hey, we were racing unprofessionally. We are professionals, but we did not race professionally. I'm like, that's so true. Unfortunately, that's just how NASCAR is today. It's just very unfortunate. So, I agree with Suarez on that. Like, he, especially him, we got drivers like Suarez that actually wants to race with other drivers and not have stupid chaos. It's ridiculous. So, then, Joy Logano had a hard hit at the tire barrier. And I was like, like, when I saw that part, I was like, oh, shit, Joey. Like, I was hoping Joey was fine, but thankfully he was okay. Ryan Priest did get part of it. If I'm missing, like, other drivers from that first multi-car crash, let me know. Um, alright, so apparently we had a red flag. And 
I don't know what the hell, but they took away the curve that was broken. Like, okay, I don't know how I feel about that, but since the curve is broken, okay, take it away. But here's the thing. I want to say NASCAR took away the wrong curve, but I don't know. The the broken curve, um, yeah, it's cool that they took it away. But they still kept that one curve that was in the middle of turn six, where, you know, a lot of drivers have been airborne, especially Scott McLaughlin on the first lap of the IndyCar race on Saturday. That curve, that curve. And, um... I don't know why they they didn't get rid of that. That was also a trouble spot. And NASCAR, I don't know what I don't know what was going on behind the scenes. They're like, "Hey, what about the other curve?" Oh no, keep it. No one's gonna go through that. Then next thing you know, Michael McDowell took flight in that curve. Austin Dillon got in it. This is frustrating to talk about because we had. A very good race for the first two segments. The first two parts of the race were fantastic. I th- I'm sure the, the final part of the race was good before they went under yellow for debris. And then things went on to crap. Like, can we just have a good race without stupidity, please? Like, I know NASCAR just stopped being a racing series and probably stopped being a sport. And they just focus on entertainment to please stupid uh, non-racing fans. But come on. Whenever you put, like, that bullshit and then safety, they're so stupid for that. Like, the chances... Here's the thing. I, I had this random mindset. The chances are of dying in NASCAR is very low, but never zero. I thought about that because this year, a lot, of, a lot of drivers have been suffering from NASCAR stupidity. And it's a miracle nobody got hurt from NASCAR stupidity. You know, most notably like Trey Hutchins, Johnny Sauter, all that. It's ridiculous. And the fact that uh, NASCAR didn't throw the yellow after the truck spun and then there was like a lot of debris. The problem was that there was debris on Trek. And they kept the green. Why? Probably for entertainment. Just bullshit. Um, I don't want to say fake entertainment because the racing was real. Road course racing is real. Um, But the bullshit gimmicks just to please um, show seeker fans and just piss off motorsports fans as they always do. So yeah, we just had like two multi-car crashes. Um... Uh, the the red flags were long, right? I think the red flags were long as hell. They were. The red flags were so long. They had to finish the race on CBS Sports Network. Because of amateur golf. So that's on NBC. Fuck them, honestly. Like, what is wrong? Like, why can't... They just showed the fucking finish. Like... They could literally just miss the first couple of rounds of golf or whatever the hell it is. And it just ended there. And that post the race on NBCSN. Nope. They were like, well, there, this red flag is so long and there's golf going up. So we're just going to go to NBCSN. And of course, as rightfully so, that has pissed off a lot of people. I'd be pissed too. And I have CBS Sports Network. But I feel for those who don't. It's ridiculous. So... Yeah, a lot of people are at fault throughout the weekend. So, after the BS red flags, we had a green-white checkered. Um, Chase Briscoe was off the track. I think Hamlin put him off the track. Did he? And then next day, you know, like, Chase was penalized. I don't get it because... Oh, yeah, speaking of penalizations, Bubba Wallace was trying to avoid a wreck, yet he got penalized. That's stupid. He was avoiding a wreck. It's not his fault that NASCAR is stupid. Bubba Wallace should not have suffered from NASCAR stupidity. Thankfully, he finished top 15 at a road course. And guess what? He sucks at road courses. So, good rebound. 
But that does not excuse NASCAR. Back back to Chase Briscoe. So he went off track. I don't think he passed Hamlin. I think he was off track. And then Chase was penalized. And then Chase Briscoe just fucking took out Hamlin. And and then Chase got karma by going way off the track. And then that helped out A.G. Allmendinger. (laughs) Taking the lead. Leading the last lap. And A.G. Allmendinger won the 2021 Verizon 200 at the Brickyard. And Blaney finished second. And as a Calig Racing fan, of course, I'm very ecstatic that Calig Racing won a cup race. And they're like, what? Is this their fifth race of the season? Because they're going full-time. Haley's going full-time. AJ's doing part-time in cup next year. And that's very awesome. Like, it's very awesome to see Amendinger winning and also Calig Racing in the very first one. R- remember, Calig Racing existed five years ago. Five years later, they're a cup, they are a cup winner. And I could not be more happier for them. I'm so happy for them, of course. But that does not make up the, the, the shit fest that NASCAR was jerking off to. But still, happy for Cali Racing. Cali Gang, baby. Cali Gang. So after the race, Chase Briscoe and Denny Hamlin were having a talk. But hold on. How the hell? Why were people so happy about Chase Briscoe taking out Denny? I feel like he was in the wrong for doing that. Like, yeah, I was hoping that was just hard racing gone wrong. But if it was intentional, why would he do that? He he was he had a penalty. Like, I don't get it. The whole Briscoe and Hamlin drama is stupid. But hey, that's what NASCAR wants. Drama. That's what NASCAR fans want. Drama. And they fight about it on social media. Rivalries are, rivalries are not fun in NASCAR because NASCAR fans ruin it. So, Hamlin and Chase had their talk. Um, Hamlin was... I don't know, like... He was telling his side of the story. He, just, he was telling his side of the story. And... I don't know. This whole situation from Hamlin and Briscoe is stupid. And Chase Briscoe. I got none of respect for Chase Briscoe, but I don't know. He's kind of sus. He said, like, he didn't know there was a penalty. Even Denny Hamlin and his crew know they had a penalty for crying out loud. Like, I remember, like, seeing a driver audio from NASCAR Gavin A this morning before I had to work. And... I think, if I can remember correctly, his crew members, Chase Briscoe's crew members, were trying to tell him that he had a penalty. I don't remember. Um, so, yeah. The Hamlin Briscoe's thing, I don't know, dude. That was just stupid. I get that you're racing for the win, but that was just stupid. But what do you expect? Chase Briscoe's a fucking rookie in a cup series. Ah, uh, but I don't know. Briscoe did not own up to uh, whatever he did to Hamlin. Uh, he could have said, like, yeah, I took out Hamlin. But I don't know. He made some random as excuses. But then again, he's a cup rookie. But I don't understand why people were rooting for Chase for that. I get that Hamlin has done stupid shit before. I get that. But in this case, like, Hamlin's a victim. And I get that you're racing for a win. You know, Chase Briscoe. I get that, but... You had a penalty. You lost. And then he just takes out Hamlin. Was it payback? Was it just hard racing gone wrong? I don't really know. And do I care? I don't know. Because... NASCAR media... The NASCAR social media... NASCAR media TV... They're just gonna fucking milk it. And act like... Sorry, and they're just they're just probably gonna add that for like the the chase commercials for NASCAR to act like, oh shit, this is what's really happening. 
you know, drama. Ooh, spice things up. Ooh, you know how it is. Wouldn't surprise me because it's NASCAR. <sighs> so I guess that's the race. All right. So what do I think about the race? I know what you I know what you guys were wondering. What was my opinion about the race? I know, like, someone was asking me what was my opinion on the Chase Briscoe and Danny Hamlet thing. So, uh, my thoughts on the race. If you take away the the last seven or six laps of the race, take away that. Pretend that never happened. That we would have had a great race. Unfortunately, um... Like, here's the thing. I still stand with what I said about, hey, this race was, this race was solid. It was pretty good. It was just another good road course race. But those moments just ruin it. I don't want to say, oh, the race sucked and all that. That Oh, those moments ruined that race. I don't know. So, who is at fault? NASCAR's at fault for yet once again... Uh, Not throwing out a caution when we needed a yellow. When there's debris on track, on an active track. Um, IMS is at fault too. (sighs) Yeah, hold on. Yeah, remember what I talked about, like, the Xfinity series? And I said that last year's race was better. I want to talk about that red curb um, that was added there. I don't know what NASCAR added there. I don't know if IMS added there. Regardless, it was so stupid that we had to see seven cars take flight because of that stupid fucking curb. And what? The the curb was there just so they don't have to go off track or whatever? Guess what? (laughs) That plan didn't work. It just made it worse than it already was. If ain't broke, don't fix it, because it was even there last year. So I don't know who. I don't know if that was NASCAR IMS. Uh, fuck you to whoever wanted to add that curve. And then after the Xfinity race, I'm like, yeah, this was not a good idea. Let's take it out. Oh, okay, good call. Da da da. So for the cup race, yeah, I already said what I. Thought about the race. Was it a good race gone bad? Um, pretty much. Like, I'm still trying to f- be positive and say, yeah, the entire race was good besides a crap shoot. But I just don't know. It bothers me. You guys know how I feel about Crash Fest. It fucking turns me off. I hate seeing crashes. You, if you guys want to see... You know, crashes. If you like crashes, go to a fucking demolition derby. They'll be happy to take your goddamn money. Because right, because crashing is not racing. Crashing is part of racing, but crashing is not racing. And if people think, like... Like, like I've seen some people say, Oh, this race is great because it had chaos. Oh, the chaos was entertaining. You're not a real race fan if you actually think that. So shut the fuck up. I just want to see a good NASCAR race. But no, it's overshadowed by the stupidity. So NASCAR's at fault, IMS is at fault, but not really because drivers were in the curves for a bunch of times, so maybe it was going to fail regardless. But IMS is not safe. And then NBC is at fault because... Because of the two lengthy red flags, they, a lot. Some folks did not get to see the finish of the Verizon 200 because of golf. I hate. This is so stupid. I don't know why this keeps happening. Fuck golf. Seriously, golf is not exciting. Like I'd rather play golf, but to watch golf. No, no, no. This is ridiculous. This is like the fall race at Talladega last year all over again. Ridiculous. So, so, 
That was fucking embarrassing. How about the weekend? It could have been a lot worse. I don't know how I feel. I feel like since, like, the coverage went road course racing because, oh, the Brickyard 400 was dying. And they wanted to, like, stay at Indy. And I can, and I can understand that. NASCAR wants to stay at Indy. And I, and I can 100% understand that. Roger wants them there and all that. But because of what happened with the stupidity, that just made NASCAR at Indianapolis relationship look even worse. Like, very bad since, since the 2008 Brickyard 400. Like, the relationship for NASCAR Indy is just, it's so complicated. You know, like IndyCar at Pocono. Uh, it's just another bad look for NASCAR at Indy. So, yeah, that's how I feel. I'm sorry if I, if I like, sound stupid sometimes. Uh, the way I talk, I don't know. So, those are my thoughts about the, the Verizon 200. I enjoyed the first two parts of the race. That's all I can say. Trying to be positive about that, but it's not easy. How about you guys? What do you guys think about the Verizon 200? What do you guys think about the weekend in general? Uh, leave your thoughts in the comments below. And also, please be respectful in the comments. Do not fight each other. Do not be toxic to each other. Please, in the comments, do not do those things thank you so that's gonna do it for another video i want to say thank you guys so much for watching this video or listening to this video comment like and subscribe for more follow my social accounts don't forget to turn on my youtube notifications for more content also expect another hot wheels diecast review the only hint i'll give you is that it is yet another imsa related diecast and oh boy I'm excited to show it off. So yeah, thank you guys so much for supporting E Nation. This is Impress48. Signing off, Cali Gang, baby.